Hi everyone, Shy here. I hope all of you are doing good. Welcome to another new video. You just don't hear much about Korea unless it relates to Kim Jong. We have North Korea, which we never really hear much good about, and South Korea, which is a bit freer. But how much do you really know about Korea? Well, you're about to learn a little more. From transport subsidies for pregnant women to very few public trash cans, here are some of the things that can't be seen anywhere but only in Korea. Number 1. Transport subsidies for pregnant women. Pregnancy is hard, not that I'd know, but so I've heard, of course. But life will get a little bit easier if you live in Seoul. From June 2022, the Seoul city government started giving pregnant women transportation cost subsidies. If you are pregnant and have lived in Seoul for at least six months, you'll be eligible for $700,001 or $540 in credit card points to be used for public transportation and gas bills. According to the city government, they believe this credit would be available for at least 43,000 eligible applicants. Something like this would never happen in America, so why is it happening in South Korea? Well, it was one of Mayor Oh Sehun's campaign pledges. The city government stated that the support plan was implemented to ease the financial burden of families with babies on the way. The only thing you can expect in America is potential eligibility for Medicaid, CHIP, or the healthcare marketplace. If you don't have insurance, you might also get free or simply low-cost care through government programs. Number 2. Real-Time Bus Stop Information no one likes being crowded on a bus, especially if there's a chance you can miss out on a seat on a long journey to and from your destination. But that might be a problem of the past in Seoul. This advanced city that relies heavily on public transport has now installed screens at bus stops showing real-time information about buses along a route. Now we all know this technology isn't new. Bus and BRT control centers have made this information available for many public and urban transport systems but it hasn't been at bus stops. If you are waiting at a bus stop, it would be a guessing game to know when buses would arrive and whether they would help you get to your destination on time. It is no longer a guessing game if you can see that several buses are traveling mere minutes apart, and you notice that the first bus to arrive is already jam-packed full of passengers. You can wait for the next bus to come. The bus screens are also interactive, meaning you can learn more about different travel routes and enjoy up-to-the-minute information about them. If you're interested, you can even see public information like weather forecasts, road conditions, and financial news. This is a game-changer for many who have become tired of being fortune-tellers regarding when their bus will arrive. Number 3. Giving and Receiving Gifts Most of us don't think twice about splitting the bill at a local restaurant between the number of diners in our groups. Service workers even know to ask whether people are on separate checks. But that would be unthinkable in South Korea. There, it's not uncommon for members of the group to race to the counter to pay for the entire table, and pushing and shoving matches to break out over who will be paying for everything. Generous is definitely a word you would use to describe people living in South Korea. They love giving gifts, helping people when they're in trouble, and giving monetary donations and loans when they're in a position to do so. Ask anyone outside of South Korea, and they would say it's an honor thing. The Korean way is about face, duty, honor, and justice, and paying for everyone's share is one way to show that you are honorable. Then there's the custom of refusing a gift or offer. At least four times a person must present a gift, and the recipient must refuse it at least four times. It might be considered rude if you'd simply say thank you for the gift. Even loaning money is quite a big deal in South Korea. Many people prefer to borrow money from friends, family, and private money lenders rather than go through a public bank. While the interest rates and dangers are much higher than banks, South Koreans like being able to bypass all the paperwork, traumas, and, of course, the government snooping about taxes. Before moving on to the next point, I'd like to take a moment to introduce you all to my merchandise. You can support my content by getting your favorite products from my store or by simply joining my channel. Your support means a lot to me. Now, let's get back to the video. Number 4. Traditional Clothing for the Korean New Year it's not uncommon for traditions in various cultures and countries to die out. The world is changing, and customs that once meant a lot to some families are now no longer around or relevant. Sometimes they're replaced with others. Sadly, it seems that's happening with the Korean New Year regarding traditional clothing known as hanbok. Whenever families in Korea started getting ready for the Lunar New Year, they would buy a new set of hanbok. Hanbok is a two-piece outfit featuring embroidered cotton or silk, and both men and women wear it. It's also a style of dress modeled from 17th and 18th century clothing or during the Joseon dynasty. It has been a preferred New Year wardrobe for centuries, and families would get together in newly made hanbok to each other and wish each other good health and fortune. But could hanbok be dying out? It sure seems that way. 
According to some sources, hanbok are still in hot demand for weddings. But a hanbok dress for a wedding might be the only such garment a bride would purchase. Young couples are also having fewer children, which means their Lunar New Year celebrations are much smaller, and not as much importance is placed on traditional garments. Number 5. Special School Uniforms School uniforms are becoming a bit more common in the United States. At least 20% of all public schools have a uniform mandate but just 10% of high schools do, compared to 22% of elementary schools and 19% of middle schools. In Korea and many other countries, in fact, school uniforms are a bit more commonplace. Most, if not all, elementary and high schools have uniforms, which differ by region, school, and even class. For Korea, it's about pride. The uniforms are called geobokes, and students wear them from middle to high school. There are different uniforms for boys and girls, and even different uniforms based on whether it's summer or winter. Everything down to their socks, shoes, and belts must be the same. If students partake in physical education, they must also wear PE uniforms. Even though uniform styles and types differ from school to school and region to region, some elements are similar across the country. For example, most summer uniforms are navy, while winter uniforms are often gray. They might also include blazers, sweaters, jackets, and a safari-style uniform in the summer months. If you're a girl, you'll most likely wear a pleated skirt or long dress, trousers, a white shirt with sleeves and a collar, a tie, a vest, and white socks. Boys usually wear dress trousers, a white shirt with sleeves and a collar, a vest, a jacket, a tie, white socks, and a belt. Number 6. Korean Saju What would you assume would be the number one selling liquor by volume? You might guess vodka or possibly even the beverage White Claw, but it's actually something you might not have even heard of, Saju. Saju is a popular spirit from Korea that can be between 20 to 24% alcohol by volume. Now, obviously, this is much lighter than many other options like vodka, which is generally about 40%. If you were to compare saju to any other spirit, it would most likely compare to vodka. It has a neutral flavor but doesn't come with that familiar burn you'd expect with spirits like vodka. It's the most popular alcohol in Korea, but also quite popular in other Asian countries like Japan and China. The taste of saju can depend on the manufacturer, as there are no rules or laws surrounding the ingredients used to make it. Most options on the market taste similar to vodka, but it's not uncommon for it to be slightly sweeter, and even more viscous or syrupy. Saju is a distilled spirit, but its low alcohol content means that restaurants have more freedom to serve it. It can be served in some states like California and New York without a specialty liquor license. You only need a beer and wine permit. And unlike other spirits that you typically wouldn't drink straight, Saju is quite comfortable to drink straight although you might like to use it as the foundation of cocktails. Number 7. Very few public trash cans. When you're enjoying lunch in a public space, you finish what you're eating and throw your trash into a public bin. But if you're in South Korea, you'd most likely need to put it in your pocket or backpack and wait until you get home to dispose of it. That's because it's next to impossible to find trash cans in public places, and it's frustrating for locals and visitors alike. If you're going to purchase food from local businesses, it's only natural to need to dispose of the resultant waste. But the city government has made it challenging to do so by removing 3,900 trash cans up until 2007. In 1995, the city of Seoul introduced the Jang Yong Jai system, which was a way for the city to cut waste by putting the financial responsibility of garbage on the citizens. You had to buy your own special bags to dispose of waste, and public trash cans were removed to stop people from bypassing the system and just getting rid of their household waste in a public space. But it's had the opposite effect. Now, the very few available bins are overflowing, and litter is more common. Some residents talk about how disgusting it is to see plastic wrappers and cigarette butts scattered everywhere, especially as the problem could be solved with the installation of more bins. Seoul officials might have realized their blunder, and they're slowly trying to correct it. After large numbers of complaints from tourists and locals, they installed 2,500 new bins. But they've got a long way to go before matching the likes of Paris and Berlin, which have more than 20,000 public trash bins and fewer residents than Seoul. So, that was all for today. I hope you have watched the video up to this time stamp. Make sure to press the like button if it amazed you. Press the subscribe button if you still haven't subscribed to the channel, as it's totally free. You can follow me on all social media platforms. All links are given in the description. You can also watch other cool stuff. The playlist link is also mentioned in the description. I will catch you up soon in the next video. Till then, peace out.